All right, guys, what's going on? Uh, I see game time in the uh, the chat here. Appreciate you stopping by, bud. Glad you're here. It's uh, we got three super solid games to end the night. Uh, first, we have Hollow Knight, which is going to be up next by Visuals, and then Super Mario 64 by Amahu Mahaba, my good friend. And then uh, Super Mario Sunshine by my other good friend, CC, who you may have heard of. He he might be one of the, uh, the founders of Speed Docs. Uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, but yeah, that was uh, my last hosting block. We're, we're giving CJ a minute to get his bearings, pay the bills, use the bathroom, take care of the cat, whatever he needs to do before he comes back but uh, while we're waiting on him I do want to thank you guys for, for having me as your host for the last few hours here it's been a great time I always enjoy doing it um, and I I do want to say that I will be back tomorrow as a runner uh, I'm, I'm here th throughout the weekend to be honest uh I'll either be in chat as much as possible or uh, tomorrow I have my Super Sammy roll run sandwiched between the Chameleon Twist runs. Um, and the Chameleon Twist stuff starts at 5.30 tomorrow. Um, and then I'm, I'm commentating Chameleon Twist 2 as well as playing in Super Sammy roll. And then the next weekend, I'm back with uh, Yoshi's Woolly World and another hosting shift on the the Monday morning. So it's it's going to be a, a really really good time. I always really enjoy uh, SDAT and the Speed Docs events. Dayman saying in chat it was a forty one dollar donation that CJ is going to have to be making. Now I'm going to uh, actually do. For Sammy tomorrow, uh, $1 for every death that I have in that game. And it can be a lot. I think last time I ran Sammy at SDAT, I was like $28 or something that I had to donate. What's up, Kefka, by the way? Kefka will be hosting tomorrow during the Chameleon Twist block. Chameleon Twist Sammy block. Uh, the middle section of the tongue block. Uh, I'm also talking pretty far in the future here. But uh, for Yoshi, I was going to do $5 per death in that game because it's a lot easier to not die. But definitely, like my PB still has five deaths. So hopefully we don't, uh, we don't break the bank on that one. But I'm going to try my best to uh, put on a good showcase for you guys. Just as I'm sure every other runner in the marathon is doing. And it's, I mean, it's been a great day so far. We've had a lot of really, really fun runs. I've really enjoyed the day. Gotta be there to represent all my licky boys. <laughs> says Kafka. That's, uh, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Is there a schedule up anywhere? Yes. Right there. There's uh oh nope, that is the road to that schedule. I'll uh, let somebody know about that. Let me grab it. There, try that one. That's the uh, the real weekend one schedule, the one that says weekend one in the, the link the URL.
Hey, what's going on, Rex? All right, guys, what are you looking forward to for the weekend? What's what's a game on the schedule now that there's a schedule link? For this weekend specifically, what are you looking forward to? My answer is super easy with Chameleon Twist, but I'm going to ignore my own run in the Chameleon Twist runs because it's too biased. Uh, I think I'm really excited for... Um, the BS, the Legend of Zelda Ancient Stone Tablets. Uh, if you guys hadn't heard about that, that's not a ROM hack or anything. That is the uh, ROM from the Satella view, if I understand correctly. That is basically the um, it's an official Nintendo game that is, I guess, a sequel to A Link to the Past. Um, it's not like a, a fully different game, but it is a different game. Mario Sunshine, that's a, a good one to be looking forward to. Uh, the other one that I'm really looking forward to is the Pokemon Snap race. Pokemon Snap, I've ran that game, and I am like two minutes behind the world record, and I don't understand. Like, watching Cece and Eric do that run... They just, they go fast, they go faster in an auto-scroller. I don't understand. Yeah, there are Pikmin runs. Uh, those are going to be hype, too. I really need to watch the Pikmin 4 speed run. Have you guys played Pikmin 4 yet? I just, uh, I just beat, I got to the screen that says the end. I haven't done all the extras yet, but, um, uh, really enjoyed Pikmin 4 overall. I still think Pikmin 3 is my favorite. Or 3 Deluxe, whichever one. Um, but Pikmin 4 is definitely very good. I enjoy it a lot. I love the Pikmin series as a whole. One quick update, we um, we recently just met the Hollow Knight Pale Court Boss Showcase incentive, so we will be seeing that for uh, Visuals Run, or it will be included in Visuals Run, however you want to call that. Uh, so the, the last incentive for the day to hit, which is currently at 75 out of $300, is upgrading to the Hawaiian shirt for Mario Sunshine. So uh, definitely want to hit that, because the Hawaiian shirt does make it a lot more fun to watch. I don't know why. Something just comfy about a Hawaiian shirt. I have a Taco Bell Hawaiian shirt and uh, like beach shorts to complete outfit. I haven't gotten a chance to wear it yet, because I haven't been to the beach. But it is all Taco Bell decked out. I love me some Taco Bell. I went to Taco Bell after picking up groceries yesterday just to buy a Baja Blast. And I felt like I wasted so much money until the liquid hit my taste buds. And then it made it all worth it. You know what I mean? Uh, also, there is the Hollow Knight Save or Kill Myla incent or, uh, bid war going on. Right now, Save Myla is a in a huge lead at fifty dollars to six dollars for kill. I would say that Gaffy, not on this stream. I don't want to get kicked out, but uh, I would say that yeah. Oh, and have <laughs> uh, it looks like we did get a donation for twenty dollars, uh, from Sem and Etch, uh, that just says have fun, Viz. Thank you for that twenty dollars, Sem, Sem and Etch. Yo, OJ's currently drinking a Baja Blast. I'm proud of you, man. 
I appreciate your uh, contribution to the cause of Taco Bell. Oh, Iris, I can't take too much credit. You were in my chat the other day when uh, Grandpa raided me. Uh, so I, you had to correct me that, that time first. But I appreciate it anyways. <laughs> No, it's all good, Iris. V Hashtag Viz is better than banana bread? I really like banana bread. Viz, is, Viz has a, a hill to climb to be better than banana bread. There's, I like banana bread better than a lot of people. That's not true. I really like people. can't help it man i'm a i'm a people pleaser i'm a people person i enjoy people i enjoy hanging out with you guys even though it's like uh just kind of this i'm talking you guys are chatting relationship it's still social interaction for me and it just keeps me energized and uh enjoying stuff whoa shay i'm a i need you to uh Take the, the Dahmer energy. Just hold it in. Hold it in. Ooh, and we got one more donation before we uh, get this switch going here uh, from Vernie Valentine for $10 with uh, no comment. But I uh, appreciate it, Fernie. And um, I just heard a, a bling in my ears. Does that mean something? Does it? Does it mean I'm here? I'm asking. I, I, I don't know, man. I think it does. It's I think your marathon. <laughs> Finally, CJ has come back to us then. Hello. <laughs> it's been like 15 minutes and he's back. And he announced back. himself like that. I'm back. Yeah. Well, you know, you got you to gotta keep up appearances. <laughs> um, I'm just picking what I want to happen in the marathon, you know? Yeah. I'm just picking what I want. Yeah. Do I want to kill Myla? Uh, Yeah. Why not? Oh, do you? Uh, well, it would even up the sides, and I think that that's really what I care about the most. I'm waiting for this this to go through. I know it's coming. I'm working on it. Wait for me, I have little legs. <laughs> I'm using push to talk, which means that I have to type with one hand. <laughs> the classic host dilemma. Yeah, I know, right? To be. Oh, or there it be. is. CJ with a $41 donation. With no comment, because he can give all the commentary he wants now. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, you didn't know? <laughs> you asked me to call somebody! And that did, did put... Uh, 
That did put kill Myla in the lead. Now it's 57 kill Myla, 50 save Myla. So for those that are Myla fans, get on it. You are in the lead. And uh, good. Good. Now, now you got you to gotta catch back up. All and according to plan. As my dog is grabbing my shoulder violently. Ow. I'll uh I'll let you take it from here, CJ. You got this. Enjoy. Thanks for having me again. And uh, chat. I'll see you on the text side instead of the the verbal side. All right. Thank you, Quill. Hello, everybody. My name is CJ. It's all good. Coming to you live through the power of Estat. Brought to you by the fine folks at NASA Marathon in support of Save the Children. <laughs> Everybody, get on that train. All right. Well, we have a great run coming up for you. We have Hollow Knight, True Ending, No Major Glitches by Visuals. Coming up next, we have that. After that, we have Super Mario 64 70 Star by Amahuma Haba. And finally, tonight, we are ending with the guy. That's right, him. No, not him. The guy behind him. Yeah, that guy. CC Never Ender. Doing Super Mario Sunshine. We have a bunch of incentives between now and then. We have the Pale Court Showcase, which was met. So you'll be getting to see that. We also have the Hawaiian Shirt Mario incentive. He's got the drip, folks. You know, you have to respect his shtees. As the kids say on the internet. We are 126 out of $300 for that. So get those donations in. We are really, really close to $1,000 on day one. Great googly moogly. That's a lot of money. Get those donations in. I want to read them. I want to read your puns. I want to read your jokes. I want to be part of this Hollow Knight run. I want to look at the VOD later and be like, oh, I was really involved in this Hollow Knight run. is because they gave me so much material to work with. And I promise to be just as cringy as embarrassing as all of you are going to be in your comments. So get those donations in, exclamation point, donate, or use the panel in the description below. So coming up next, we do have the Hollow Knight run. We're going to take a quick pause for the cause. We're going to take a moment to see some lovely SDAP bumpers. We're going to hear from our friends. We're going to hear from Save the Children. And when we come back, we'll be live with True Ending No Major Glitches by Visuals. Don't go touching that dial. We'll be right back.
can be done with very little. And the best investment we can make is in children. To work with human beings from the very beginning of their life. We work in far corner of the world. We provide training and chance for children to grow up healthy. We work in far-flung, isolated rural areas. We can build small-scale projects with a few families and in the community in general, and then they can have impact on the life of thousands and sometimes millions of children in other places. I believe it's very important to work with children in the early years. You help them to grow into their full potential. Investing in children's lives is investing in the future. We respond to any emergency of scale anywhere in the world. We're unique in that we are specifically looking out for the welfare of children in an emergency. And sometimes those needs are very different than the needs of adults and the rest of the community. It's not just about financial resources that help children, advocacy and policy change. That can affect millions of kids' lives. That's why the work of Save the Children is so important. We're there in the communities, working with community members to make sure the kids get an education, they have access to health care, to make sure they're protected from harm. The world is facing many challenges. We often wonder what's the best we can do to heal the world, to make a better future for mankind. The future of the human race is really in their hands. everybody it is that time it is hollow night time joining me here is visuals go ahead and introduce yourself and your commentators hello hello everyone i am visuals uh, you can call me viz um today we're going to be running truening uh, no major glitches uh, and i have two commentators with me i have uh rhino and slow if you guys want to introduce yourself yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Rhino. I've, I'm a Hollow Knight speedrunner myself and longtime friend of Viz. Uh, this is my second time commentating one of his speed hoxathon runs, and I'm excited to be back. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Slow It Down, and I am your bona fide filthy casual on the set here today uh, to basically act as a proxy for somebody that is a little bit more familiar with this game casually, so I can, you know, point out things that might be a little bit more relevant for the rest of the commentators to talk about. Yeah. So, um... Just a couple things before we get started. Uh, if you see on the top left of my screen, there's a screen shake modifier active, meaning for just recently, I think three or four months ago, it was allowed that we could modify the game to where the screen doesn't violently shake whenever things happen. Um, so if you, it looks a little different to your casual playthrough, that's why. Um, and then the other thing is I'm going to be donating $2 for every hit that I take uh, during the run. And unless I miscounted, I'm pretty sure there's 16 intentional uh, hits that I have to take. So we're starting at a $32 baseline, but uh, if you guys if you guys want to help um, count along with the stream, um, Slow is going to be our, our resident uh, ticker, and she's going to be keeping track. So, um, yeah, we can get started. And All right. In, Give us a countdown. Go I got gotcha. you. In three, two, one. All right. So... Hollow Knight is a 2017 Metroidvania, <laughs> as you guys have probably heard about. <laughs> um, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It was made by yeah. three people, a game company called Team Cherry, and it was a Kickstarter. Okay, anyways. Do you so, just have the Wikipedia article? No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so um, you play as the knight, um, and if you look in the top left, we'll get started real quick. Uh, you'll see a big circle and five little masks. Five masks are my health, so anytime you see one of those get taken down, that's going to be $2. Um, we are not counting double damage as two. We're counting it as one. Uh, so there will be a couple times during the run where if I, you know, if I get hit once, uh, just count it as one. 
Um, and then the thing over to the left, uh, the top left of the circle, is our soul meter. And soul is essentially mana um, in this game, and it works on a system of you hit enemies, which gives you one ninth of your soul meter, and you use three ninths of it, so a third of it, to cast spells or heal. Um, so every third hit, you can do one of those. We don't have any spells yet, but we will eventually. Um, but yeah, we're going to make our way through uh, the world of Hollow Nest, picking up different... I mean, if you've played a Metroidvania, you know. Uh, you unlock different movement abilities to unlock different areas, to unlock more movement abilities until you eventually can access anything. Um, we're not going to get everything. Um, we're not going to get the Acid Swim ability. We're not going to get any of the spells. Like, there's three spells and one upgrade for each of them, and we're only going to get one of the spells and its upgrade uh, because it takes too long to get the other two, unfortunately, even though it's way more damage. Um, the one we're going to get at its most powerful form is going to be 40 damage, and a lot of times we're going to be trying to make it hit enemies twice to do 80, but that's not always possible. One of the other ones are 88 damage and 120, but unfortunately just getting them is just so slow. And one thing to point out real quick for, for anybody who's not super familiar with Hollow Knight, a lot throughout this run, you're going to be seeing Viz open up his inventory during falls. Um, that's a technique that is available to do on older patches of the game, like what we run now, called inventory dropping. And essentially what that does is it uncaps your fall speed. Um, in Hollow Knight, you there's have one. a... <laughs> there's one hit. You have a maximum fall speed. There's two. Um, and opening your inventory while falling allows you to negate that. All right, um, we're on the board. <laughs> yeah, we're on the board for two. Yeah. Uh, I didn't press down late enough, so it forward slashed when I was supposed to bounce off the spikes. Whoopsie. So, one thing you'll notice that I do a lot um, is when you hit things left or right, uh, you get like a little bit of a knockback. Um, so, a lot of times, if we don't want to deal with that knockback, we'll up slash so we can just stay in place. And then, the most probably the most useful thing in the game is the down slash you just saw me do there. It allows you to get a little bit of a bounce or what we call a pogo off of something and that's actually incredibly useful like even more so than you think because a lot of times you can pogo off of hazards you can pogo off of uh, enemies and one of the most useful parts of it is later in the game we're going to have a dash and a double jump and when you use one of those in the air like let's say you use your dash you don't get it back until you touch either the wall if you have wall jump which we will or uh you touch the ground again but when you pogo on something and get height off it it gives you both your dash and your double jump back yeah, and we'll be seeing a lot of that um, later in the game in White Palace, which is an area anybody who's familiar with Hollow Knight probably knows White Palace and how fun of an area that is, so we'll be seeing quite a bit of that. So here's two of our intentional damages, because I'm going to walk into them. There's three. Now, there is actually a developer-intended skip you can do to skip this boss fight, which people who have paid attention to Hollow Knight runs in the past will know. Um, you know, most categories of this game, you skip this boss fight. However, in categories like True Ending, we need to eventually come back and fight this boss in his dream form. So it makes sense to just kill him now while we're here. Yeah, you can't challenge the dream form unless this boss is already defeated. And having the 200 Geo that he's going to give us in this chest is actually pretty useful. So it like, kind of gives us, kind of feeding two birds with one scone. Um, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, the pe the Peter in? proof. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so we had a five dollar donation from Shafe. Hey, Shafe. Bread bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat. <laughs> and then uh, that went to Kill Myla. So Kill Myla firmly yeah. in the lead, like yeah. 16, 17 bucks. Let's go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, how, how we have a while before we have to know about Myla's fate, but uh, yes. Yeah. So get those donations in. You can. Her fate is in your hands. So. For those of you who don't know, Miley is a character that um, succumbs to the infection, and oh. if you finish the game without ever going over there to do anything about it, um, some people believe that she like gets cured once you defeat the infection. Uh, we'll get more into what the infection is in the story later, um, if ever. But uh, for now, it's not like super important, but essentially... Um, I'm going to be going over to her regardless. At some point in the run, probably after White Palace, I'll probably say, okay, don't give me any updates. And once we get to that point, I'll run over to her either regardless of which one it is, and then I'll ask you once we get there if I'm killing her, staring at her. <laughs> yeah. But she's a fan, uh, beloved character. And we're going to merge. Also Good. Uh, would one of you guys mind explaining uh, the difference between uh, using like different languages uh, for running this game? 
Yeah, oh yeah, that. sure. Yeah, sure. So, uh, we run this in, I know a lot of speed games do this as well, but in Hollow Knight, we run this game, um, in Chinese because not only is the text shorter, but it scrolls faster for some reason in one, two, two, in I think all patches of the game, but yeah, the text just scrolls faster. Um, and over the course of the run, it saves quite a substantial bit of time, especially in a run like True Ending that's a little over an hour long. Um, that time really, really adds up. And speedrunners don't really need to read the text. We kind of know where we're going. We know what the characters say. Uh, there's no, there's no real information we need. So it's just a complete posit net positive to to run the game in Chinese. I've heard an estimation is about per 30 minutes of run, uh, it saves about 30 seconds. And so yes. it'll save about a minute here. So one trick we're going to see right here, which is actually patched out after this um, this patch that we run on, is called the baller like one shot. So essentially, if you saw earlier, I killed one of these guys with four fireballs. I had to shoot three, which is our maximum amount that we can have. And then I had, oh, my Smashbox did the thing. Okay, we'll grab the controller <laughs> for the other ones. Um, but you have to wait for him to, to shoot one of his little blue enemies so that you have more soul so that you can hit him a fourth time and it takes four fireballs. Well, for that one specifically, he's kind of rooted in the ground and you can get off screen and turn around and shoot a fireball and it just makes it to where it hits him four times and he dies in one fireball, which is incredibly useful for eliminating the RNG right there where you normally you'd have to wait for him to give you a spit. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going to be doing three things called fireball skips. I just did one of them, or I missed one of them, because my smashbacks turned me back to the left. Uh, this is the most important one that we're going to do here, and I'm going to switch to controller for it. Easy. Yeah, the none of these fireball skips are required to go through the run, but you're talking substantial time loss. Um, if you don't do them so at a top level you're pretty much get, i mean you're gonna see every single runner going for them yeah the first one costs two seconds to not go for it and three seconds to go for it and miss uh the second one is like minutes like you'd have to go all the way around or you'd have to find another way to up there you could pogo off a little fly um the third one is about 10 seconds but yeah. obviously we don't want to deal with that can i jump in really quick we just got two more donations absolutely we got a 20 dollar donation from grace uh, that says book game and that went towards save Mila. and then Ooh. we got a another donation which pushed us over a thousand dollars uh from, from sam and etch hey. hey. save my life gotta make this a proper bit war after all yeah. so, so there you go Mila back in the driver's seat <laughs> just so like that Viz, we gotta ask you, do you prefer to kill Myla or leave her alone in this run? Well, uh, seeing as I have previously had world record in kill Myla percent, um, I'm gonna go with kill. <laughs> yeah. So real quick right here, um, some people who are more familiar with True Ending but haven't watched Hollow Knight in a while uh, may notice that Viz is killing um, Bench Light King here. Very, very recently, actually, a new optimal route was found in this category um, where we get Dream Wielder and use that throughout the run. And it changes something how we collect Geo, um, other upgrade, other. Um, it's it's actually not a new route entirely. It's a route that a couple runners in the community have been doing for quite a long time. And we just believed as a community that it was a little bit slower. You lost a couple seconds, but it was much more consistent, removed a lot of RNG. And over the course of an hour run, some runners just preferred that. Um, but with recent, recent new timings and people just understanding the route better, um, we found that not only is the new route um, safer, more consistent, it's also just it's just plain old faster. So there's no yep. reason not to be doing it anymore. And you're gonna be seeing you're gonna be seeing Viz do that route um, here. So if you've never seen the Dream Wielder route, as it's called, um, you are an experienced Hollow Knight um, viewer, player, etc. Um, we're gonna be using that route today. Yep, yep. All right. So uh, what you just saw me do there is something we're gonna use throughout the run. There's a, there's multiple ways to get around the map quickly, and one of them that we have available to us early is saving and quitting back to a bench. Uh, there are other spots in the game that are hard saves, so if you would like open up the menu and quit, and you come back in, it would just be like you laying on the floor. There's not a ton of those, um, but for now, we're gonna use that bench to, like we use it to save and quit back from, because otherwise we'd have to walk all the way back from Hornet and take forever, so. There's uh, two other means of fast travel that we're gonna use. This one's one of them. This is a what's known as a stack station, just a fast travel station. Um, once you unlock them, you can travel between them. We're not gonna use it right now. We just wanna have it unlocked for later. 
Um, and then the third one is a dream gate, which uh, we'll, we'll get much later, but essentially it's you can set a spot in the world and then teleport back to it for at the cost of one essence. And we'll get into what essence is later, but um, it's a really low cost and incredibly useful when you want to have like your bench in one spot, your dream gate in another, or if you're about to go to somewhere where it's going to hard save you. So um, here in a second, we're going to buy the best charm in the game um, called Shaman Stone. And I'll explain a little bit more about what it does in a second, but we're also going to be doing a trick called the Shade Skin. And I'm going to be going for one fireball. And if we miss it, I'm going to cry. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, for one fireball in a marathon, like, you love to see it. <laughs> so essentially a fireball skip, or sorry, a shade skip, uh, not a fireball skip, is where when you die, you leave behind what's called a shade. It's a little like shadowy version, ghost version of yourself. And it holds all your geo. Uh, if you played Bloodborne, it's similar to that, uh, where if you go back and kill it, you get all your money back. If you die before you get to them, then you lose all that money and that shade is gone forever. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna spawn one right here, and then we're gonna use him to pogo and sequence break up onto this platform right above me. <laughs> up there. Yeah, the shade skip we do in this category is super interesting because we don't have a claw yet to climb up walls, so we do quite a bit of uh, acrobatics yeah. to make this work. And if he fireballs, I'm gonna actually cry. <laughs> oh, whoa, it ate my jump. Okay, we'll reset. Real quick, we did get a $4 donation from Iris that says, gotta even it out. Nice. A nice, clean 1020. Nice. Can I make a tiny nice. request for no crying? Oh. I don't know the audio to handle that. Right. <laughs> well, I missed it, so. Oh, no. It's yeah. okay. Um, but I mean, we need, to, we need to die. It's okay. I tried, but I'm... I'm much more comfortable doing it from Sly's hut instead of from Saluba's hut, and mm -hmm. I tried to do it, but I just didn't quite get through the height. It's okay. It's okay. More money for charity. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, that's five oh, more dollars. Another five, that's the, or another ten dollars, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's another ten. <laughs> Rack it up. Sheesh. All right. Yeah, you're, you're up to 30 right now. Yeah, so th there are many variations of ways to do this specific shade skip, even without claw. Um, you can do it with two fireballs, one fireball, zero fireballs. But either way, you need Please someone stop. to stall yourself in the air. I, I mean, I could save it with one fireball, but also if we, if we, uh... Okay. Oh yeah, that's another hit. Uh, that's actually one I didn't calculate, so never mind. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, she was being very mean to me. It's okay. Yeah. So we're gonna and go. Oh, good. No, I was gonna say you know, that the reason that we do this skip right now without having claw, like you would see in any other category of this game, is we need to. There is a boss that we need to fight to collect essence, which Viz kind of alluded to earlier. When we go down for claw, and doing this shade skip into here now to get Dream Nail allows us to, to, to fight that boss and collect their essence without having to make a second trip back to where we get claw. Yeah, so. There's a couple of requirements to beat this category in, in game. The any percent is just getting into the Black Egg Temple, which requires you to get this item called the Dream Nail, and then you can go around and you can absorb these three beings right here called the Dreamers. And once you have killed them, absorbed them, vanquished them, exercised them, whatever, uh, their seal on the Black Egg Temple goes away and you can open it, accessing the final area and the final boss. But that's just to unlock the quote-unquote bad ending or the, the any percent ending on top of that we need to get two halves of a, a charm called king soul uh and in order to get one of those halves we need to have uh 1800 essence which is a big part of the earlier whenever rhino said that first boss we fought where we need to fight his dream version that's because he gives like 300 essence and we need to get 1800 of it um and then we need to turn that into void heart and that's essentially like what separates any percent and true ending we're going to be getting void heart so we can access the true final boss yeah i'm just going to point out real quick i know it happened like 15 seconds ago but for anyone who was curious why viz just decided to dash oh. off the uh, starting platform there um it makes the platform spawn faster overall so we just do that it shortens the little in-game cutscene. 
Just in case anyone was wondering, like, did Viz just decide he doesn't want to play the game anymore? No, it actually makes the, the cutscene run a little faster. F this S, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So now that we have Dream Nail, um, it's like this said, we can collect the Dreamers. We're also going to use Dream Nail throughout the game. Um, I know earlier we mentioned that one way to collect soul is to hit an enemy, and then it fills up one ninth. Uh, no, one of your soul meter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right, you're right. Sir. Yep, yeah. So, but if you if you can also hit enemies with Dream Nail, the ability we just picked up, and that gives you three the equivalent of three hits of soul, or one third of your meter, and then later on when we get Dream Wielder, um, it gives you two thirds. And it charges faster, which is also and charges great. a lot faster, right? Um, and so. Just so you have kind of an idea of damages in this game, our main nail does five damage, and it's possible to upgrade that to eventually 21 um, with four different upgrades at four each, but we're not gonna get any of those. It's gonna be five the whole game. Our fireball right now, well, when you get it, it does 15, and then we put on the charm shaman stone, as you can see right there, and that makes it do 20, and eventually we're gonna upgrade the shaman stone, or the, sorry, not the shaman stone, the fireball, uh, to be bigger and have, have like a, a little bit different of an aesthetic. It's it's like fully black instead of white. It's like void, and um, it does 40 damage. And like I said, we're gonna be trying to make it do 80 by hitting enemies twice. And so, so this mini boss fight here that's going on is another one of the big changes that happened with that newer route I was talking about earlier. And the reason we're doing this is when you kill these little shroomo ogres, as they're called, they drop this item called a charm notch, which there are many throughout the game, um, but more or less they allow you to equip more charms at a time. And since we're going to be running with the Dream Wielder charm later on in the game, it allows us to equip that along with Shaman Stone. That was also two more hits. I got him. <laughs> Slow is on top of things. Can right. I jump in really quick? Go for it. Sorry. We have a $10 donation from Anonymous that says Super Rude Shade, to be honest. Uh, they did not <laughs> vote for Saber Kill Myla. They voted for their favorite type of pasta. Oh. What, what did they vote for? Website is being difficult. Oh. Right, I'm, I'm going to pretend that's that they weird, voted for Gnocchi. That's a weird... <laughs> <laughs> You pretending that they voted for Noki? I love Noki. <sighs> Noki's great, yeah. Isn't it not pasta? Uh, it can be. You know, Viz infamously ran in his Discord a while back a um, a bracketed tournament for the best sh pasta shape. I did. That was a qual that was a quality event. <laughs> they voted for Penne, which feels like, like it's gonna run away with Penne. Like Penne is gonna win. Good, yeah. That's a solid yeah. choice. Yep. I like Penne. The only thing that was yeah. able to take down Penne in my tournament that we had was Rigatoni because they're basically the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, like we had ZD at one point and people were like, whoa, penne and slightly different shaped penne. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here we're going to do a trick that you cannot do the same way anymore. And it's called the explosion pogo. Uh, and right after that, coming up here, we're going to do something called the mantis pogo, um, where we are going to hit this lever down here and then use these mantises to pogo back up. Otherwise, we're gonna go all the way around. So here's another intentional damage that we're gonna take, unless I miss it, which would be sad for time and for money. Cool, got it. So now we have the wall jump, um, which really opens up the game, and we use that guy to hit us in that animation so we can quit out almost immediately, as soon as you see the little save icon. Yeah, if we didn't take that intentional hit there, there's a fairly long little tutorial that comes on the screen about your Mantis Claw that you have to sit through, yep. um, and that loses quite a bit of time, so. What number are we at? 21. 20 9 plus 10. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to go see our second Dream Warrior here. I almost always take damage to this fight as well. Which normally doesn't matter. Today it does. Oh. Yeah, and if, and if Viz does this well, we should see him get the kill on this boss towards the right side of the screen and then leave the room upon yeah. killing. It just makes the cutscene happen a little bit faster to leave the room and come back. That's so annoying. It, yeah, it doesn't look like uh, unfortunate. So that last fireball, I needed hit him to get triple hit, and he only got doubled, um, which meant that needed one more hit. 
So, um, if you saw, yeah, uh, during both, I think we're gonna point about. We are, we are. <laughs> uh, during both Elder Who and Zero, um, what's supposed to happen when you absorb the Dream Warriors like that is you Dream Nail them, and then you have to like watch like a whole cutscene while you absorb the essence. Uh, but on this patch, you're able to start a second Dream Nail, like a buffered one, and it allows you to get control of your character early, so that we can get like closer to the door. You still have to kind of give it a little bit of time, so that like we make sure we get the essence if we lose to leave too early then it'll uh, not exist but um yeah we're gonna be doing that with a dream gate later uh but yeah it's pretty nice we can't do it anymore on current patch which is frustrating one thing you've done a few times here that i wanted to point out but i didn't want to interrupt you was um a technique called wall cling storage mm -hmm. Which, um, essentially, for, for those who don't know, the long and short is essentially you dash through an opening gate in such a way that you trick the game into thinking that you're stuck, you're still clinging onto a wall, um, and it preserves your forward momentum that you get from the dash and lets you move a little bit quicker. It's so a we'll see. I don't, I don't know how many more of those we see in true ending here, but good amount. It's a cool technique. Okay, cool. You're gonna see it like shade though, you're gonna see it in white cause. But essentially, it, um, the thing that's really good about it is it well first off you get to keep a jump because you're clinging to an invisible wall and it's it's a minor glitch that's allowed because we have what's called a topography rule meaning you can do it as long as the only benefit you're getting is speed if it allows you to get up to a platform or a wall or anything that you wouldn't normally be able to access with your current tool set without the walking storage you're not allowed to do it so i'm gonna do a trick here called reviclus i'm gonna miss it the first try that's awesome Oh, come on. I keep doing it just too high. Yeah, there the collision go. on the side of that wall is very odd. There's like a weird lip in it that you can very easily get stuck yeah. on. Yeah, you have to do what's called a uh, trans dash where you like dash into the wall and then neutral jump off of it and it allows you to kind of clear farther away from the corner. Um, it's kind of weird, but that one is it's hard, hardest. It's probably the hardest one to do because you can't see your character for most of it. Yeah, yeah that, that takes quite a bit of practice to get properly, but it does save a substantial amount of time versus going all the way around to get up that waterfall normally. Yeah, if you, if you hit it first try, it saves five seconds. If you don't hit it, uh, if you hit a second try, it breaks even. And then after that, you're losing four to five seconds on every attempt. Yeah. So we are gonna get the dank amount of geo from this enemy in here. <laughs> nice. Yeah, well done. And if you can do the correct damage rotation like that, and he dies on that last fireball hit, which is nice. Am I one geo? Sh oh, two geo short. Okay, that's okay. You want to be at 500 here you have one more oh you have a couple chances to get more but you have a pretty quick one where you kill these guys we call the lever lads yeah this category actually used to be have a section in it that we just kind of are basically at what would have been the end of it which was the most boring part of the run like we used to call it like errands running or grocery shopping or whatever like it was just you just ran around and collected relics so you could sell them to the and it was not that interesting but now it's like it's not that bad yeah, and also Raptor's Relic is a thing now, too, which makes this section a little more exciting than it used to be. And it makes me take another damage, so... Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to use Fireballs and Damage Tanking to stall in the air here. So that we can get up here. Oh, no, why did you do that to me? There we go. Might get early control. Yep, that's another hit. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Saves time. Yeah, it does save time. Did you get it to hit you immediately? Yeah, you got it. That, that, that's not common. Yeah. You're racking it up, bud. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to need to start a GoFundMe to pay off. <laughs> that's <laughs> for this run. Down, down. <laughs> so, uh, this is Lim. We're, this is the only time we're going to see him during the run. Um, we're selling him these historical relics okay. from the world. The uh, that way we can um, get up to a pretty high amount of Geo down that we're going to need for two items. Um, one that we're about down to buy like right now, down. and the other one after we go to Crystal Peak. But we're going to buy the Lantern first. Um, the Lantern lights up dark areas, which I know a lot of people would think, oh, you're a speedrunner, just like do it in the dark. But like 
there are certain things you can't interact with in the dark um, unless you have the lantern, and we have to interact with two of them. So we have to get it. Yeah, especially in certain categories like all skills, low percent, etc. Um, most runners are not afraid at all to do rooms in the dark. But like Viz said, it just you you physically cannot do certain things without lantern. The the game just doesn't allow you to, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah it just doesn't load. <laughs> yeah, literally doesn't load certain things or certain interactions. So we have to spend a lot of time collecting 1,800 geo to get this lantern. Indeed. So now we're going to make our way over to the Crystal Peaks. Um, pretty cool area. There's some cool tricks in here. Um, we're going to be going for something called God Pixel, where there is a tiny gap in between this enemy and the laser that he shoots out of him, and it's just wide enough for the knight to fit in, which is kind of cool, but if I miss it, there's another hit. <laughs> and we're going to go for another walkling storage right here. And one cool thing about the walkling storage is if you jump on the first physics frame that you hit a ground, you can actually carry it like that. Oh, mm -hmm. I got one. Uh, you can like continually do it over and over, but you have, it's it's pretty difficult to chain. You can, you can get all the way out of that room if you are sick with it. <laughs> yeah, Crystal Peak is usually regarded as um, a lot of a lot of players' favorite uh, segment in the run because there's not a whole ton of RNG here. It is really good movement. There's no bosses to worry about. Not really a lot of RNG. It's a very fun section. So here's where we're going to try to fit in between the enemy and the laser. It's possible that he's not shooting the laser, but it... Ooh, that was good. Right. Oh, so that was too far right. Two dollars. So we're going to get the shopkeeper's key here. That's We're going to bring that back to Sly and Dirt Myth so we can buy... Another key. Found a key to unlock another key. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, the ability that we're making our way over to is called the Crystal Heart, uh, also commonly referred to as Super Dash, C Dash, Crystal Dash. Um, essentially, it lets you charge up on a, either the ground or on a wall, and you can fly horizontally until you either hit an enemy or terrain that stops you. Or stop yourself if you want. And then you can do this section either damageless since it's one second slower, or you can take damage and donate two dollars to charity. Yep, save the frames, not your wallet. <laughs> Definitely not saving the frames by going to kill Milo. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Alrighty. So, got Crystal Heart, and now we're gonna do another trusty save quit. That's why we benched uh, in the main town, Dirtmouth, so we can go straight back to Sly and buy the Elegant Key. And the Elegant Key is actually interesting to me because there's two ways to get into the, okay. There's a door that Elegant Key unlocks, that unlocks a fight, and then behind the fight is an upgrade for the fireball, which is like a set And it costs $800 to buy the key here. If we could somehow find a way to spend that 800 geo on dash slash instead, then we could just avoid the fight underneath Shade Soul and just do what's called a lever skip, uh, which essentially on this patch and this patch only, on oh no, sorry, on every patch you're you're able to hit enemies through the floor and walls if your nail like goes far enough. But on this patch for some reason you're also able able to hit levers through the floor and sometimes through the wall. A lot of times, dash slash, which has a really, really far range. What the? Okay. Um, my, my jump one. Um, a lot of times, you're able to, like, the one that started it all, the first lever skip, is actually coming up in this next room, where we're going to hit this lever through the floor, and which means that the game doesn't think that we're able to be where we're going to end up being, so it doesn't actually turn the lights on for us because we didn't unlock it in the correct <laughs> way. So this is a spot where we actually have to go and, like, literally pitch black. But it's okay. So I just hit the lever there. You can hear it opening that door right there. We're going to come binge first, and then you're going to see the, the dark room. <laughs> yeah. So... Pretty easy room if you know where you're going. Yeah. 
And, and like Viz mentioned earlier, um, the purpose of benching there is that whenever you save and quit out from the game, you wake up or come back to the last place that you took the bench. Um, so it's less about healing there and more about it allows us to travel faster after this fight we're about to see Viz do. Yep. There are some areas, though, that uh, can override where that save location is, though. Could you speak to that? Yeah, yeah so that's correct. right yeah. after this, we're about to go to the first Dreamer, and all Dreamers are a hard save. Don't do this to me. <laughs> uh, also, um, like, if we were to, for some reason, go kill the boss up top uh, called the Soul Master, he has a hard save after his fight for no reason. Um, I, I don't even know. Why is that? Because, like, it's not like that's the case for, like, Broken Vessel. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea, honestly. That's so strange. That's a good point. All right, so here's the mini boss we call Norman. Uh, we want to try to get as many double hits on this guy so that we're doing 40 damage instead of 20. There's a double hit. And then we also want to. Can you, uh, what, can you speak to where the name Norman comes from? I actually have like, no idea. I was going to say, in like three and a half years of running this game, I have no idea where that name comes from. I have no idea either. <laughs> uh, but as you saw, I kept this guy alive. I had to make sure that at least one of these guys were alive after the fight because we're going to lure him up here. And this is where we get the upgraded fireball. And instead of having to watch the entire cutscene, he pops us out. And all we have to do is wait for the uh, save icon that's going to pop up in the bottom right. We do a wiggle mm -hmm. to make it spawn faster, and we can quit out immediately. Yeah. Yeah, really good fight, too. Good fight. So. Uh, so. So now we have that upgraded version of our fireball spell that Viz was talking about. It does double the damage, and it's a, a bigger hitbox as well. So. Which comes into um, play a lot. Yeah, and... It, not all spells do, which is why we don't get them, but Shade Soul is a spell that it does so much extra damage throughout this run that it does save enough time overall to be worth going out of our way like that for. Yep, because we you have to almost required to get the regular fireball, so really you only have to factor in getting upgraded, whereas the other ones you'd have to factor in getting both. So, okay, this boss here is called Watcher Knight, and there are six knights normally, except for if you break that chandelier, now there's only five. Oh. If you've ever watched any percent, um, this boss is likely, it's the hardest part of the run by a pretty significant margin. Uh, but when you have a fireball that does 40 damage instead of 20, um, it is quite fast. You kind of just bully them. It's still possible to die, like on the last pair with 4 HP. Something we're really looking for here is Viz fights his bosses. If the knights start rolling away from us, um, we can, you can shoot a fireball that essentially travels along, yeah, you saw one a second or two ago there, but you can shoot a fireball that essentially travels along with the knight and hits them up to three times, which is just insane damage, um, coming from our shade soul. So that's reach. the pattern we're looking for. Reach, let's go. Thank you. Oh, that fireball went through him. So, that's something that can happen all over the oh i'm oh, sorry geez. hyper <laughs> uh something that can happen in this game is when you hit an enemy with your nail it gives them short invincibility frames and if you press nail like if you're standing right next to them and you press nail into fireball like as fast as the game will let you your fireball will just go straight through them and not do any damage which will be quite frustrating yeah so we're gonna put that yes i messed up the elevator classic um yeah and like Slow was mentioning earlier, this Dreamer here is the place where we do get hard saved, so quitting out to the bench doesn't really buy us any benefit here, because, well, we don't have that respawn point anymore. Yep. So, first Dreamer, um, and we're going to have to run all the way back down, but um, this is where most true inning runners will say the run kind of starts, because we're about to enter the section of the run where we have to fight three pretty difficult not difficult difficult to go fast uh and can kind of get out of hand if if you let it f uh fights um kind of four actually because broken vessel and lost kin but then you have to do like markoth and gore which aren't like super difficult but like can also go awry it's just a lot of boss fights in a row and uh it can it can be quite slow <laughs> if you let it so we don't need all this to you even though i Literally just got every single one. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't really trying, but they just kind of bounced into me. Yeah, that was uh, that was a really good pattern. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so now we head into like this. A lot of a lot of true wedding runners consider this where the run starts, where we head into the boss gauntlet, where we're just the most of the rest of the run on top of collecting the dreamers, just getting up to that 1800 essence Viz was talking about, which is the magic number you need to uh, complete the, the true ending. Uh, ending of this game. AKA the Dream No More ending. Right. <laughs> Yes. True ending, to be clear, is uh, a term not endorsed by Team Cherry. As they explicitly yeah. stated with an yes. asterisk. asterisk. They were very, very clear about that. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, it's possible to get hit by any one of these three if they're too low. I got hit to the first one, which actually is not the worst one to get hit to. Getting hit to the second is the worst. Yeah. Yeah, and as we come up here, um, in a couple rooms, we're going to see Viz go through a bunch of enemies that spit infection bubbles up called uh, Mal... Mal... Malurks, is it? Mal yeah, Malurks. Oh, oh, wait, no, is it... Oh, oh the, wait, no, yeah. I think you're right, I think you're right. Yeah, it's Mal... Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, no, I think the ones that, like, crawl around are Malurks. Are the ones that are stationary Malurks? No, cause it's because it's the brooding Malak. The boss. Yeah, but there's also yeah. the ones that are, like, mini ones that can, like, cr like before the pale or... I don't know. Maybe. Well, e either way, we're going to see Viz moving through a bunch of them, and it looks a bit kind of RNG, but there's a very, very specific way to move through these enemies to minimize the number of times you can get hit. Um, there's at least one I can think of immediately in the heat of the moment right now that is completely RNG, but all the other ones with good movement, you just won't get hit. Yeah, it's the one right it here. It's a bit Aww. of practice. Yeah, n no pressure. Oh, no pressure. there's two. Oh my god, you're joking. Oh no. Oh no! Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> you, yep. Yeah. So of those three hits, the first two were we're gonna we're gonna say they're Viz's fault. The third one is the one that was RNG. And and the fourth one was also just uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Once you get off your rhythm in that room, it can be really it can just be really tough. Yep. So. Here we have Brooding Moloch. Uh, this is the first version of the fight. Um, not super long, and then we're going to fight one of the bosses with like, the most health in the game, uh, which is the dream version of this fight, which is much harder, but, well, harder depending on who you ask. Yeah, I, 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 a lot of people joke that the, uh, the form of this boss that we're fighting now that's supposed to be easier actually is almost a little harder. It's kind of likened to like uh, a baseball pitcher throwing a slow ball. Like it is a change, change up, yeah. Yeah, throwing the change up at you. Because you're just so um, used to the speed from Lost Kid. Because, like, I, yeah, I'd argue. Practice is broken, exactly, though. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I start every stream with like 30 minutes of Lost Kid. I have never practiced yeah. broken vessel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the boss we're going to fight here is essentially, it's, we, we talked a bit about dream forms of certain bosses. Well, this is the dream form of Broken Vessel called Lostkin, and most of its attacks are the same. It has a couple different attacks, but um, they're just a lot faster, and this boss is way more health. Um, now, with as with a lot of bosses in this game, it's really just about, Viz is looking to get this first stagger. Um, all bosses have stagger counts, well, not all, but most bosses have stagger counts, where after a certain number of hits, they kind of stagger. Um, for a casual player, that's the only time that you probably heal up like a breather. Um, but as experienced speedrunners, once we get that first stagger in the corner, there's a very systematic way of doing this fight. Um, like, yes, the boss is RNG and what attacks it gives, but we it, trained, experienced runners more or less have ways to, to handle pretty much every pattern or response you could get. That was a good fight. <laughs> that was a really good fight. That, that was a sick fight. I had, the, the I had a crazy, yeah. Was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was, that that was, was nuts. I'm surprised the game didn't freeze right there for like, staggering and killing an enemy at the same time. Yeah. So now here is where we're going to go get the Dream Wielder charm. You've heard us talking about it since the start of the run. This is the big main focal point of the route, ch the most recent optimal route change. Um, so you've seen Viz using Dream or his Dream Nail a few times. So Dream Wielder is essentially a charm we put on that we got the extra charm notch earlier so we can fit it on. 
Um, that makes us use our Dream Note a lot quicker, and it gives us double the amount of soul per hit, like we mentioned earlier. So that makes a lot of the bosses coming up a lot more consistent, a lot more forgiving, and even faster in some cases. I love that we're talking about Dream Builder when we just got like a major movement upgrade, which is the double jump. <laughs> yeah, honestly, completely <laughs> forgot that happens there. Yeah, so we can double jump now. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it has it has a bit of a dip on it. Um, what actually yeah. kind of obscure movement tech in this game, which like is not really super relevant until you like start getting into like high levels of running, is that there's the the there's like a delay between being able to like between your pogo and being able to double jump, but there's actually a way to circumvent it by turning your character around after the pogo. You can like double jump immediately, and it actually like if you pay attention, you'll see me do it a lot. Where like in between pogo, I'll like do a quick turnaround, Whoa. and it's actually pretty hype. I think. Yeah, it, it saves quite a bit of time overall, like if you can do it right. Mm -hmm. So real quick, we're going to set our bench here. We're going to go talk to the seer. And she's going to give us, she gives you um, rewards for different amounts of essence, uh, which is why in the very beginning, we came over here to have her open the spear blade over to the right. But right here, she's going to give the pale orb, which we're not going to use. Um, that's how you upgrade your nail, but we're not going to do that. But we just need that dream wielder charm. Yeah, a fun fact is that all of the... Is it the Dream Warriors or the Dream Bosses? I forget. But Warriors. one of them, the Dream Warriors, yes, their health scales with every nail upgrade you get. So with how many we need to fight in this category, it really doesn't save any time at all. And in fact, probably lose quite a substantial amount of time. Yeah. So we don't bother upgrading our nail here. Um, yeah, you know, really Watcher Knight does as well. Oh, that I didn't know. But Watcher yeah, Knights really... is super in, uh, in um, inconsequential. The Warriors are like, it almost doubles, like, on every gotcha. nail break. Yeah. So we're really just relying on that Shade Soul spell we have as our main damage dealer for this run. Yeah, so this boss coming up here, Failed Champ, this is the dream form of False Knight, who is the first boss we fought. Um, this boss, I don't know if you'd agree, Viz, is the one that benefits extreme, like, way over the top the most of all of the bosses we fight the Dream Wielder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and the re one of the biggest reasons being is that this boss, when you hit his armor, you don't get any soul. So we kind of are really relying on that Dream Nail to collect soul to shoot fireballs, which is do so much more damage than our nail at this point. And that was a really good first phase from Viz there. triples yeah so this boss is the, the hammer that he swings has a hitbox that you can damage too so if you shoot your fireball at a very specific time here you can hit the hammer go through hit the body of the boss then hit the hammer on the other side of the boss as he's doing that tantrum phase in the middle um and Viz just had a pretty perfect fight there so <laughs> very well done that's good yeah we yeah, basically got all the really triples clean. we wanted we got not good doubles in the beginning, but he allowed me to get two Dream Nails, so I was able to shoot, you know, a bunch of fireballs that just ended up being really fast. Yeah, and for, for anybody wondering, you know, we've talked a bit about how that Dream Wielder charm makes you Dream Nail a lot quicker. That's what really allows you to get more Dream Nails on that boss. Prior, you really wouldn't have time, or you'd have to take a hit from that boss who does double damage um, just to get a Dream Nail off. You could, but the window was super tight. Like, yeah, it's you had to, like, super tight. anticipate... Oh, what the... You had to, like, anticipate yeah, you... him jumping. You had to dash under him and, like, frame one, turn around, start Dream Nail. And a lot of times, like, even sometimes he would just jump away and you wouldn't even get it. And you're like, oh, cool. I'm glad I wasted all that time just standing there. Yeah. So, Dream Wielder, that fight in particular just is so much more forgiving now. So again, she gives us a reward that we're not going to use, um, and then she gives us the Dream Gate, which we will use uh, quite a bit. Um, and that's where we're going to be using it to set... Like, if you think about it, putting it like on top of a, a stag station, which we're about to do, is incredibly useful because it basically allows you to teleport to somewhere that allows you to teleport to places. <laughs> so it just, yeah. <laughs> it just unlocks uh, a lot of quick movement. Yeah, and as Viz mentioned before, um, all the essence we're collecting, every time you use your Dream Gate, it consumes one singular essence. So um, if you're on a good run, if the run goes as planned, shouldn't really affect anything, but it is something to be conscious of, especially in a marathon setting. Yeah, because a lot of times, we, like, you also have a chance to get one essence from like every enemy you kill. Uh, but it's a really low, I think it's like 1% or something. Um, and I, I, 
also at the end we're gonna uh grab a dream tree which spreads all these little circles these little orbs around and uh every one you pick up you get one and we're gonna grab like seven or eight of them Ooh, acid skip yep so right there we abuse a little bit of a hazard respawn by getting far enough over to the right it allows you to get ported onto that platform normally you'd be able to get there if you went all the way around but it's just really long yeah. could save you bench here but uh no Part of yeah, we don't we don't we don't do that here no way <laughs> yeah so coming up here this boss is going to be hornet again we have to fight her twice throughout this game she's much more difficult this time she has some new attacks um but this is kind of for lore wise this is hornet guarding the skill that you would gain that allows you entrance to the abyss which we'll go to later on which is required to get the void heart which this is talking about a bit like Lostkin here, this is the type of fight where you get Hornet staggered in the corner, and then if all goes well, you can kind of keep her in a rotation and just stunning her over and over, getting doubles. That was a pretty good fight from Viz. I'm very no happy hits. with that. Yeah. No, da no donated money to charity there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, kids. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Yeah. I've, I've given you a bunch of extra hits already. <laughs> It's yeah. okay, yeah, if I have been doing my best to keep track, I, I mean, Chad is free to correct me, but we should be at 38 hits so far. Sheesh! Yeah, so this ability we just picked up here after that horn fight is called King's Brand. It doesn't actually allow us to, our character to do anything new in terms of movement or skills or whatnot, but it, like I mentioned, it, it allows the character to pass through a door that allows you into um, the abyss. It's just a, an, a big, wide-open area in the game that has a few things we need. So we need to, yeah, we need to get two things from it. One we're going to get right now, um, which is the Shade Cloak gives you a small invincibility during the middle of your dash on a short cooldown. It's like every third dash, you'll have it. Um, and it allows you to like go through these little like shadow balls, which we're gonna go through a couple of them. But uh, also helps for, you know, getting through enemies, getting through attacks. It's nice to have, but we need it to get into two different, very important areas. But right here, I'm gonna try to set up a wall cling storage. Nice, okay. So we still have wall cling storage. It's a little finicky if you don't know how it works, but essentially it, was, it allowed me to like keep my dash and yeah. navigate that area very quickly. Yeah, that was really well done. And next coming up here, we're gonna have um, what's called the sibling climb, which is in fact a run killer. Oh God, um, I hate this. Yeah, the, all of these enemies, these little, th these are technically our siblings here. Uh, I won't go too deep into the lore in a speedrun marathon, but these enemies' positions, where they spawn, where they are, um, there is a little bit of RNG, so you do have to be reactive here. And this really, <laughs> the, the ending there was a little sketch, but very good job overall. They were in my way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, fighting radiance without shade cloak works if you have D dark, but we do not have D dark. <laughs> right. All right. So we're gonna do a trick called the Taiwanese quit out here. Do and you want to explain why it's called yeah. that? <laughs> so a long it's time a cool ago. Story. Yeah, I think this was like 2018 or 19. Yeah. Somebody submitted a run. Of, I think it was either True Inning or All Skills, where they. Right there, as soon as they touch that that water, you get shade cloak. They quit out, and after like we noticed how much it, like it saved ten seconds of in-game time, and we we're like, what? And it was a Taiwanese runner. We we're like, okay, thank you, dude. Like yeah. <laughs> they just never said anything to us. We just had to you know a verifier just yeah, saw it, it. Yeah, a runner that was like never heard of by anyone in the community prior. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a well-known big name runner. At all. Yeah, <laughs> so it was thanks just for some the ten seconds, guy. my guy. <laughs> Yeah. My yeah and furthermore, too, in categories where we have, you know, where we have Dream Nail, you can kind of use your Dream Nail to get early control of your character while the screen's still loading in in that dark section. So it just saves tremendous amounts of time. Alrighty. Yeah, so coming up, we're going to fight another Dream Warrior called Markov here. Um, you, like this said, you need Shade Cloak to get through this little black shade wall in front of you. Shade Cloak is what allows us to pass through that. Um, there's going to be a couple more of those we see throughout the run that Shade Cloak is required to get through. 
very good fight. Yeah. And so right here, um, we're using the Dream Gate as the animation for us getting the essence is happening. So we're basically like making sure that we leave right after we get all that essence from them. Um, because we have Dream Builder, we actually, like if you didn't have Dream Builder, you could just uh, buffer in a second Dream Nail and immediately just leave. But it, because we have Dream Builder, Dream Builder and it happens faster, you'll actually leave too fast. You won't get the essence, you'll just dip. And so we have to start a second one, kind of let it like buffer for a second, but like not go all the way through, which can be annoying because it can lock out your dream nail if you mess it up. Um, but now we're just gonna go head over and grab another dream warrior named Gorb, who if all things go correctly, I should shoot three fireballs that hits five times and he dies. Yes. Which again is one of the, because like, the reason why these dream, war dream warriors are dying so quickly is because the game doesn't expect you to have nail upgrade or sorry uh fireball upgrade and shaman stone doing 40 damage per per hit um and sometimes 80 if you can get it a double hit like we it should here and have a five damage nail like they're expecting you to have upgraded your nail already and then these guys would have like almost double oh i guess cool. and there's an extra hit Then we're gonna take an intentional damage right here so that we can open the menu faster. Or I'm gonna, okay. Yeah, normally we would use the Venchly that Viz killed earlier or a couple seconds ago, but. I needed him for soul. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was kind of in my way. All right, so now we're gonna go to uh, the RNG boss, the giant jellyfish, the Metroid. Um, this is a boss called Umu. Um, Earlier you saw that we killed Watcher Knight and one of the Dreamers was behind it. Well, this is another boss where the Dreamer is behind a boss. Um, and it's named Umu. And it, there's a lot of RNG that goes into it, including... Like, you can't do damage to the boss until an NPC comes in and opens the boss's outer shell. And when that NPC pops in to help you is random. So you can... Oh, also, hold on. I'm going to go for a trick here. I miss it. Okay, hold on. Miss it again. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> um, nice saves, by the way. Thank you. Usually people hit acid when they miss Yeah, that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was expecting you to. <laughs> uh. So, um... Oh! I did the thing! That jellyfish was going too fast to hit me. On one frame, he was oh on the right side of me. God, on the, on yeah. the next frame, he was on the left. Let's go! Jeez. The jellyfish hates charity. Let's go! Dude, I, I have heard of that, but in yeah. all my years, hours playing this game, I've never seen that actually happen. <laughs> I, I've always known it could happen from people saying it, but I've never seen that. That's crazy. The jellyfish the got zero frame. Up. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> the out of up just right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the amount of attacks that this boss can do, the speed at which the that it can do them, uh, is all RNG. Um, so it has two attacks. This is the slow one, but it, you can't get three fast attacks. Like that's impossible. So just because we got the slow one the first time doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Okay. Yeah. Fast attack. That's good. If we get two fast attacks. That's perfect. And we're gonna try to do. Oh, okay. That's okay. It's only a couple seconds. But we're gonna try to do this fight in a, such a way that we kill it in one cycle. Uh, and if I don't get it perfectly, then we will have to wait for it to open up again. Yeah, in a in a PB attempt for a top level runner, missing a one cycle is pretty. That's a dead run. Yeah, there's at least that's like true. 20 seconds, and you're yeah, can be bad. Oh, frog! Yeah, the frogs love kids. That's gonna be fun. There's also a wall cling storage we can do here that Viz didn't go for. I don't blame him. I'm not good at it. it is. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I practiced it before, and I was not getting it at high enough. Uh, <laughs> sure. I should have learned it for the for the marathon, but. I don't do it in runs. Yeah. And so again, you'll notice Viz actually set a dream gate outside of the archives here. And again, the reason being is that we can't use a bench to get out of here because absorbing a dreamer hard saves you. But it saves a ton of time just dream gating out of the archives after we get this boss. Which is funny because I wish we could do that on Hera too, but that's one of the the few areas in the game that you can't dream nail or dream gate out of. They don't they don't want you to. <laughs> Yeah, right, yeah. I, uh, no, never mind. 
I was gonna say, I guess they didn't want you to get like locked out of doing Beast Sim, but I mean, if you have wings, you can get into the. It, I mean, I guess it's kind of hidden, so hardcore right, people yeah. would be like, oh, I sat on the bench, nothing happened. <laughs> sure. Alrighty. So now we're gonna go to the worst Dream Warrior in the game. Good old Yes Eyes. Yeah. <laughs> This boss is incredibly random. Every time you it, you hit it, it has a chance to teleport. And we need five fireball hits, which means if you don't get two of them to double hit, then now you have to chase it around. And every time you hit it, it has a chance to teleport away from you. And there's these stupid little ghosts that float up and down. And for some reason, my brain just does not register how to not get hit by them. I did yeah. see a request earlier uh, to talk about, um, yeah, pogoing. Um... Yeah, pogoing projectiles in no eyes. Oh, so yeah, these ghosts, this is actually <laughs> super not well known. These ghosts, you can actually pogo, and it's kind of crazy. Who made that request? Come on now. Shave. <laughs> I love it. Oh, let's go. Oh my goodness, yeah. Wow. It's a very lucky fight. Not super common. And we have an extra in soul. Nice. I saved time to yeah. PB. <laughs> Look at that. So now we're gonna head through Queen's Gardens, um, and we have to take an intentional damage coming up here soon. Uh, I highly implore you, if you like have the means, <laughs> if you turn on debug mode in this game, like it, the, you know, not in the game, but like the debug. Mode. Sorry. Uh, that, if PG-13, that's yeah, yeah. one F-bomb. <laughs> the, uh, the hazard respawn for these thorns is so comically bad. Like, it extends, like, it's like they meant to put 20 pixels and they put 200, or yeah. really 2,000, because it just goes up through the floor for no reason. So instead of doing this little, like, mini platforming section, you fall in that exact spot, and it just puts you down the bottom for no reason. That's yeah, great. it's quite funny looking. It's like a... a super tall like rectangle <laughs> yeah. and, and that's fixed in later patches of the game but yeah. not on this one yep so we're gonna use it while it's there and we're gonna come up on the part of the run where i have the least amount of say about how much money i'm about to donate to charity uh oh, frogs are about to make you go bankrupt <laughs> These frogs are completely RNG, and they, they well, they, I guess they jump on a certain like timing interval, but which direction they jump and like how they're going to interact with the environment is so janky that you just you just pray. Yeah. You, you guys keep saying that, but what happens whenever I get zero hit? So this this whole arena here is pretty scripted. Um, you know, the enemies spawn the same places. You can do the same thing. Um, you know, so an experienced runner like Viz has a, a plan for exactly what to do here: when to get dream nails, when to shoot fireballs. Things usually work out pretty well. Uh, okay. <laughs> a couple hiccups there, but overall fine. I, I missed two double hits. And I'm not sure how, but it's yeah. okay. And honestly, I feel like this section coming up right here is a primary reason we don't just overcharm Dream Builder, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we set a Dream Gate here because Viz is heading to a boss right now. Um, guarded by these frogs, which as we said, they jump on a specific cadence, but a lot about where they jump and the direction they jump is a bit... Uh, RNG, and I love seeing you get through the first room hitless on a run that isn't a PB attempt. <laughs> what the? What the? Jeez. Okay. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. Getting hit only once there is actually insane. That makes up for the five extra hits you had to take to do shade skip a second time. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh. So that boss is a nice, quick, easy kill again, because we're doing way more damage than the game expects us to be at this point. Um, and dream gaining out again. We're going to head up to another boss now, Trader Lord, um, who will give us the first piece of the King's Soul Charm, or a white fragment. Um, 
to get in to get to accomplish the true ending or the dream no more ending of the game you need to get both white fragments turn and turn that charm into the void heart and that allows you to enter the final fight against the radiance and if you've ever seen this fight on current patch it's gonna look a little different um uh, because the, i guess they decided that this boss is basically just a big version of these guys and that wasn't good enough for a boss so they buffed the hell out of him, um, but he is not buffed here. He is very strong, or very uh, weak and frail, and we're going to demolish him. And we're going to see Viz get early control to start the fight as well. Yeah, so every time you, well, most bosses that you fight do kind of a scream at the start that locks your knight in, posi in the position it's in, unable to do anything. If you dash or get hit manage some other way to get hit by the boss during that scream, you regain control of your character and allows you to start doing damage immediately without having to wait for that animation. So here's the queen of the world known as Hollow Nest. Big tree. Mom. Tree mom. <laughs> she looks pleasant. She does. I like her design. So, quit out. Now, the other half of King Soul is a lot uh, more <laughs> it's difficult. It's not nearly as easy. Yeah. That is a wimp of a boss behind a shade wall, and that's all you need. Uh, this one you need, you have to get 1800 essence, you have to get the seer to upgrade your nail, then you have to do the hardest platforming section aside from the optional one that was in a, included in this DLC. Uh, yeah, and it's just a lot more requirements. Yeah, I think what, a part of what makes this run so fun to watch as a spectator is the end of this run is really hype. Like, there's so many fun things. Like, White Palace is really, really hype, then the Void Climb, and then obviously the Radiance fight is extremely hype. Um, it really just makes True Ending a good category. <laughs> Maybe take a few years off the runner's life from stress, but really, really exciting to watch for viewers. I was really hoping that spider would be over to the right so I could remail him. It's okay. Yeah, so leaving this section here, Viz needs 1601 essence. Um, we're gonna get 200 from Galleon, so that'll bring us to eight. Uh, from 1600, that'll bring us to 18, and then we do a Dream Gate, which takes away one of the essence. So we need to have 1601 exactly, or more. Yeah, yeah. but no less. <laughs> If you are, there's a tree outside of the Sears like room, and you lose yeah. like eight seconds or so dream yelling it, but not the end of the world. No, it is the end of the world. <gasps> yeah. Love getting devils. Big call. Yep. Oh, we didn't have any dream nail mishaps. Let's go. Oh. Because if you if you go to start that second one and it goes all the way through, there's a way to kind of fix it. But essentially, if you mess it up, you can just get locked out of your dream mail and you have to like quit out and or find a room transition. Which that in that case, it'd probably just go to the exit. But uh, yeah. some places like Marmu, the exit is nowhere close. So yeah, so we're gonna go get the final dreamer here. Um, normally, there's a whole big long cutscene you have to go through. You have to sit on a bench when you walk into the room. There would be a cutscene where the enemies inside tie you up into a little web and you have to escape and then go through their little den. But if you have wings, uh, you can go through this little secret passage that this is going through um, and kind of skip all of everything I just said. Which is very nice because uh, this area is really annoying on the Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, where are we at on uh, Milo? That's a great question. Uh, I'm refreshing. Okay. Just so I have up-to-date information. All right, we're oh. at Save Myla, $90 to $62. Oh. So if Ooh. you want to kill Myla, you got to get the let out. You got it. You got to pick it up, guys. out of your pocket. <laughs> See, I'm conflicted. I want to save the frames, but I also want to kill Myla. Well, the funny part is, regardless of what we're doing, I'm going to go run over there. So, you're not saving that much. I'm going to stare at her and let her know how lucky she is. All right, so... <laughs> uh, that was our third dreamer, and that's also Hornet's mom. Fun fact. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Hornet. 
I also have a big ass spider in my garden that we named after Hera because this whole <laughs> area is like spiders. Yeah, fun fact about this area is when I first started running this game, I actually turned down the volume on my headset every time I came through here because I couldn't hear all the skittering and scratching and clawing and stuff. It was so gross. Oh, yeah, it is pretty creepy. So, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna use the fireball to hit that bell early so that we can. This probably doesn't save it RTA, but it saves uh, in game time. So, we can pause the timer when we go through the transition. So let's see here. Now we're gonna come up and it's gonna be the last time we talk to uh, the seer. She's gonna give us the awakened dream nail, which allows us into the white palace. There's an enemy outside that you have to go into his dreams and until you have the awakened dream nail, he has like a shield around him. Yeah. Again, getting rewards we're not gonna use. Extra mass shard, but doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, there's no way to just get the one singular thing you want. You kind of have to keep talking to Seer until you until you get everything. Give me a menu, Seer. Yeah, there's the Awoken Dream now. And White Palace is just really fun to watch. It's a cool area. It's just pure extreme platforming. Uh, the developers definitely took a page out of Super Meat Boy designing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody who, who is familiar with Super Meat Boy will understand why in a few moments here. Yeah, it's just a very, very intense platforming section. I probably won't be talking a ton during here. Missed the, the double hit on him, that's okay. So this is really the only enemy that we have to fight in, in the White Palace here. There's another one that we normally would have to fight, but we're going to see Viz do um, what's called King's Mold Skip coming up in a moment, um, where you can essentially... The, the, the exterior boundaries of this area are surrounded by clouds, and the developers just gave used spikes as hitboxes and as we've seen in the game already we can pogo spikes so with very careful practice movement we can pogo off the spikes to skip um a fight and just save overall time so very well executed by viz oh. saved <laughs> well executed by viz there yeah and that that saves quite a bit of time um, compared really to having to actually that. yeah compared to having to go through the boss fight and uh fight it and just it's a slower route in general so that's a really cool skip that we have there yeah. one interesting thing about uh, white palace too is this is not true for all rooms in hollow knight but all of the rooms in white palace are on global cycles with where the saw positions are and everything um so there are certain cycles we're looking to hit here um, with where things are positioned, when we do what, etc. Yeah, so in this room, I'm not going through as like fast as possible, but it's because we have to wait. I have to wait for that cycle. There's another version of that room that's a little bit faster, um, where you go on one extra one cycle earlier, but I do not do it. Yeah. And this room here, um, definitely a little sketchy. It's very well done. <laughs> when I was learning this room, that was a very stressful. The fitting between those buzz saws that go up and down is very, very precise. So. And you can't sh and you can't shade cloak through the buzz saws either. No. That's the biggest walkthrough story in the game. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to see another skip coming up in a bit, too, um, where we essentially squeak through a buzzsaw on a wall to uh, skip an entire long room by just C-dashing across the top of it. Um, we'll see that after this room that this is in here. And again, there are definitely um, White Palace as, a, as actually as, as, an, as an IL or an individual segment. Um, is something that some Hollow Knight runners just r they just run White Palace by itself, and there's some pretty crazy IL strats you can do that a lot of runners, for obvious reason, don't bother going for in an hour-long category. Um, but yeah, highly recommend going to speedrun.com and checking some of those out because some of the ILs for White Palace are absolutely crazy. The cycles and movement they hit. Are 
you gonna go for chalky cycle? Uh, I'll try. <laughs> if Adam is watching, shout out to him. I don't even think he found that cycle. I think it just got named after him for some reason. Odd. Yeah. Why do I? I'm not. Oh, but I missed my double jump. Oh, now we can't go. Uh, yeah, I missed my double jump. That's okay. Yeah, there's a cycle you can hit in this room that's like a, about a half cycle faster than um, with these spears here that are trying to crush us as we drop down this corridor. Um, but it requires pretty quick movement leading up, because as I mentioned before, um, the cycles in White Palace are global from when you enter a room. Oh, for once it... Oh. I was going to mess with you, and then... It bit, it oh, you. no. <laughs> And some people with a keen eye may notice that um, Viz earlier had mentioned doing little turnarounds after you pogo an enemy to refresh your wings quicker. Um, we definitely saw quite a bit of it there at the end off those floating enemies, but it just it's a lot it would be a lot for me to point out every single one. Yeah, like I just literally just did it on the lantern right there. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny. I, I think myself and may maybe you and a lot of other runners I know, for for whatever reason that I cannot explain, just did that inherently without ever being told. Yeah, because you, you kind of feel it after you play yeah. enough. You're like, why did it take so long for my wings to come out right there? And then you kind of like piece it together. Yeah, no one ever told me that. And then when I when I heard it was like an actual thing, I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Oh, Gustin, you're right. Yeah, I was taking those hits for charity. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Extra four dollars. All right. So here's a mechanic that we haven't seen yet. And so if you notice, we have four what's called charm notches, and each no or each charm has a certain amount of notches that it costs for you to put on. But you can actually go one charm past that limit if you just keep continuously trying to put it on. It'll it'll eventually let you, and you see the purple like little glowing behind it. it means we're over charmed. It means you get the, the benefit of those charms, but now I take double damage. Yeah. And some people might be wondering, hey, well, if we could do that the whole time, why didn't we over charm the whole run? Why do we bother going to get the extra charm notch? Uh, short answer is we would just die a lot. <laughs> yeah, we would die a lot. Yeah. It would be very lot. unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, like Viz mentioned, when you're overcharmed, you take double damage from all sources. So that means if an enemy already does double damage to you, you take four damage per hit, like all the siblings that are in the abyss down here. So it's it's pretty much just runners acknowledging, like, yeah, it would be way, way, way too hard. We already have not enough, a high enough success rate of getting through frogs with five, like, yeah. four, four potential like hits you can take imagine if you only take two yeah and then you'd have to heal because you, you would need like scream skip on trade lord and yeah that would be a little crazy so, so yeah that's why we got the extra charm <laughs> all right so pretty soon um actually this will be the last mila update cj and then I'll let people try to snipe it because we're about to get there. Yeah. All right. Well, it's exactly where it was. Okay. If you donate twenty nine dollars, you can snipe it. Somebody do it. Somebody do it. Somebody do it. You don't have a you don't have a ton of time. You don't. Yeah. 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 So what we're doing right now is called the um. Well, I, I think specifically the Void Heart climb, because there's also a, climb, a version of this climb you do in another category. But more or less, like, the, the text you're seeing on the screen is kind of explaining the lore of this game. Um, we're essentially in the knight's own memories here. Of th th More or less, this is essentially the lore of how the Hollow Knight was chosen. Um, despite the title of the game and the fact that we are a knight, your character isn't actually the Hollow Knight. Uh, the Hollow Knight is the final boss of the casual any percent ending of this game. The little guy that we just saw leave the birthplace with the Pale King without us. Yeah. And if you want to get into like lore, he was chosen because he was supposed to be completely empty, because only something, a vessel that's completely empty can hold the Radiance, which is the final boss and the source of the infection, but uh, the Hollow Knight is not quite empty and he has thoughts and feelings and uh, he doesn't like when people say mean words about him. Uh, and the player character is absolutely completely empty. Literally, no thoughts, head empty, uh, canonically. Right. And so, if you do the bad ending, you just take the Hollow Knight's place, and you know Hollow Knight will be okay, but uh, you won't be. You'll be stuck. In well, there. you're not okay no matter what, honestly. <laughs> eh, 
yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so technically your character is a Hollow Knight, but it's not the Hollow, the titular character. The, oh, oh God, Knight. don't do that. Okay. Sorry. Oh, gee. I wasn't paying attention. Hey, hey, Jim Fitz. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. That was just more money for sure. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Did anybody snipe it or are we going to stare at Mila? Uh, yeah, someone sniped it. Oh, oh is she dead? Kill Mila won by $2. Ooh. At the who, buzzer. Later. Who is the hero? <laughs> who is the, the champion that allowed us to have this glorious moment? I'm refreshing. Houston. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go. Donated <laughs> $30. Thank you so much. Let's Gustin. go. Thank you. For, for those who don't know, Gustin is another extremely talented Hollow Knight runner mm -hmm. in his own right. Yeah. That's all. I'll give you guys. The brain. I apologize. <laughs> it's all good. I'll give you guys a little uh, cool glitch here. Oh yeah, we're gonna do it. I wish I could show Cyclone Knight, but we don't have Cyclone Slash, so I can't. But I can show you guys this one, which is Rocket still funny. Knight. <laughs> yeah, Rocket Knight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I like Superman Knight. That's good. Love to see it. We're definitely gonna heal, and also just in case we get infinite load or invisible THK, wanna have my bench there. Yeah. So normally in this fight, um, you know, for an any percent ending, you would just fight the Hollow Knight, kill him, and then you would absorb the infection from him, kind of like we have with all the Dreamers. But when we have Voidheart, that triggers the game so that right before the Hollow Knight would die, Hornet comes in and essentially opens up his mind to be Dream Nailed so we can go inside and fight the Radiance, um, which is the, quote, true ending, as us speedrunners call it, of the game. Shave, I'll see what I can do. If it's very convenient to heal, I might just so we don't have to go through another five minutes of fighting the Hollow Knight. That went right through on them side. Whenever um, THK is doing that attack where it's stabbing itself in the stomach, it can only take one damage no matter what attack you do, which is why we don't see this using Fireball during that attack. That's so whack. Uh, not really, I I'm saying attack, it's more of an animation, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well we don't have to scream skip, so... Yeah, so you enter, no matter how much health you have, when you do this Dream Nail here to enter the Radiance fight, the game just gives you full health back. So you really want to focus more on having full soul here to start the fight off and do some big damage. All right. <laughs> See, but if I heal, I can take another hit to Radiance. And that's another $2. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so every hit you take from Radiance uh, or her attacks does two damage. Again, another re Can you imagine doing this fight over Charmed? No way. And you'll notice that Viz tries to get even in height about with where the Radiance's center of mass is, um, because if you shoot her straight across the wings, you'll get double fireball hits, which obviously is a ton of extra damage that we really want to take advantage of here. Yeah, pretty right. good first phase there. Yeah, I messed up on the orbs. That was an avoidable piece of damage, but it's okay. Yeah, we're not healing. Yeah. Notice here that Shade Cloak can be used as a defensive ah. tactic, tactic against bosses as well. In fact, it's borderline required to fight this boss um, when she does the attack or the, the giant wall of sun or whatever just comes across the screen. I don't have a dash! Oh, uh, I thought I'd dash off the platform. Oh. Yeah, and this is a hard fight. Um, 
Uh, it's it's one thing that I think makes this category really exciting in races in particular because even if some one runner can be really really far ahead, like that's a fight where no matter how good you are at this game, like you can die in that fight, especially with nerves going if you're on a good pace. Like it's it's really never ever until it's over. So unfortunately, we do have to do the entire Hollow Knight fight again, which stinks. But more chances to get hit for charity. You, you can just reload the save and then go kill Myla again. <laughs> Oops. Really? Yeah, thinking about this because we talked about Trader Lord earlier and how that boss is a lot more difficult on um, more recent patches of the game. Same with the Hollow Knight too. Um, they made him attack quite a bit faster. His, some of his attacks do more damage. Um, you know, it's, admittedly, if you go through the whole game and get a lot of powerful upgrades, it's a bit anticlimactic coming to just fight THK. So, highly recommend doing the true ending at least of all the endings. All right, we're right back at the Radiance, literally fighting the sun here. Well, single, really. She's being very mean to me. She's being very mean to me. Come on. <laughs> been here before. <laughs> <laughs> Does this feel familiar? Yeah. That's I actually we died the first time because you had too much hull. <laughs> For those who don't get the references we're making, back in, I want to say 2019, yep. Viz infamously opened up uh, a GDQ event and did this fight on one health and even had the opportunity to heal between phases and infamously said we're not healing and completed the fight for one health. So it's kind of become a meme in Viz's community to know <sighs> that we're not healing. There it is. Here's the end of the, the category. GG's <sighs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No jump rope percent. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, once the. Um, there's gonna be these little circles that kind of float off onto the bottom of the screen, and once the screen goes completely black, um, it'll be fine. So, here in about five, six seconds. Whew. All right, well, one death hurts, but what am I gonna do? Not the end of the world. All right. And there you go, yeah. time. Wow, GG, dude. Thank you, thank Woo. you. <laughs> And our final tally for total number of hits is 63. All right. Holy shit. Jeez. <laughs> All right, well. Uh, don't, don't, huh? don't spend the rent money, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> and if I've miscounted, I will donate any extra myself. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so well, if any of you want to support Viz and his effort to uh, hit this $126 and subscribe. Yeah, there's going to be some extra streams this week, folks. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you notice I'm on the grind. <laughs> we're doing $1 beer pong. There you go. All right. Uh, is there anything you guys want to say before we get you out of here? Uh, we have, do we have the pale court? Oh, we did. We did do that. Yeah. I'm nice. Sorry. Oz, no, you're not getting rid of do us it. yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to throw you out. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Viz, why don't you talk a little bit about what Pale Court is and, and so, all that? Uh, well, so. Sorry. Do you oh. want a new timer before we get started? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I gotta. Yeah, I gotta close the game and and get the new one open and everything. But yeah. All right. So I will close this as much as I like the mini music. All right. So, do, do, do. so yeah, essentially Pale Court is a um, fan mod that was made for this game. And it's not the first time that we've had, you know, a mod get created for Hollow Knight. But 
for me, I'm not super big into the, like, oh, let me make this boss, like, borderline impossible type of... <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. We just had a $126 donation from oh Sam and God. Edge. Oh, my God. Bonk. Thank you. Bonk. Thank you. <laughs> thank you and so Yoki much. is in the lead. Let's go. Commandingly. There we go. Wow. Thank you, Sam Edge. You guys are the best. Um, but, yeah, so essentially... Uh, this isn't the first time, like, you know, people make fan bosses and they're always super duper difficult. Um, this is the first time where this was a huge project. Uh, shout out to the, the team that made this. Um, I, I know their name. Uh, it was like team. I'm so sorry. It's, I'm blanking. But it, it was a group of modders that they got people to do uh, voice acting. They made brand new music. They made a brand new um, uh, home screen here, like menu screen. And it's just so well done that it doesn't even feel like a fan project. It feels like an, an official DLC for the game. Um, but yeah, we're going to show off some of the bosses. I'm not going to show off everything in the mod because there's a couple other things that are hidden and I'll let you guys, uh, if you want, you can, you know, it's available for free download. Um, you can come check them out yourself. But yeah, we're going to, what order should we go in? I'm going to go dry a hegemol Isma, and then I'm going to save this one for last because I'm really bad at it and I'm going to change one charm. Yeah, um, there are a couple other things that this mod introduced, but um, in the world of Hollow Knight, there's five great knights, and you only fight one of them in the base game. So in the um, in the mod here, they, they gave you a fight with the other four, and they're really, really cool. And like I said, have their own boss arenas, music, voice acting, all of it. That's really, yeah, really they cool. did an, um, the team that did this, amazing, amazing job. Yeah, yeah huge shout out. incredible. Yeah. So we got Drya here. Oh, start off with a jump thank you. Oh yes. Sorry. Right, start the timer. So you're gonna see me using dive a lot because it gives you invincibility frames, which we did not see in true inning. Uh, but we're gonna use that to avoid damage a lot. <laughs> they are very fast. Yeah, for anyone casually playing this game, spamming dive is like a nice good way to kill 90% of the bosses in this game. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I didn't have dive yet. I was, one thing interesting about Pale Court mod, um, coming from you know being a speedrunner, just crushing bosses fast all the time, it really reminded myself that um, you know. It, it, well, I, I should say, it made me question, am I really good at this game, or do I just have a kind of <laughs> Like, do, have I just practiced specific bosses for hundreds of hours? Yeah, it is, it is very, it, that's, that's honestly another thing with, uh, like, anything that you do this, every time I step out of, like, a run, like an official speed run, I, I realize how good I am at doing things I practice over and over, and then I try to do it in a situation yeah. like, like, learning, like, sight reading, and I'm, no. All right. It's probably my best boss, and I say that I'm much better. You're just asking for it now. Quick heal. So he has a similar uh, thing to. This is the the armor that the fall, the failed knight uses, or false knight. Sorry, failed champion. There we go. Um, but it's his actual owner of the, the armor. Um, and he is a lot faster and a lot better with his armor. Yeah, canonically, it's literally the same armor, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah as far as the game's lore goes, we don't really know uh, where Hedgehog is or what happened to them. Oh, I slipped. Magic getting on the tower right now. <laughs> I mean, in the game files, um, Hera is actually called Hatchmill, but I'm pretty yeah. sure that's I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, that's been confirmed to just be like a development um, thing, and that's that's not like any sort of hints towards Hatchmill's identity at all. I really, really like that fight. I think it's the most the the, the most like fair and easy to learn and I and this one is not but we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> this fight I feel this fight is um, when it goes well I feel like I'm super sick at it 
And then when it goes poorly, I feel like I get hit eight times in a row and I'm like, what is happening? Stop, 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 stop. So we'll see which version we get today. The boss just has a lot going on. Yeah, I saw that coming. With these Venus fly traps that God, there's just so much going on. Oh, I didn't have that soul. Okay. I'd commentate more. I'm just not super familiar with this. Oh, you're <laughs> fine. Yeah, nor, yeah. nor am I. There, there's some <laughs> questions about this. Like, yeah, asking if the music is original. According to the GitHub page, it says that this is a new soundtrack. I'm unsure if it's sampled, but yes, it was specifically for Pillport. Yeah, they yeah, made it. It's everything. great. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I, ha I know that on the GitHub page, the credits are listed there. I put them in the... I, I put them in the Twitch chat. Nice. Yeah, I, I, we do have some, like, very, very talented musicians in the Hollow Knight community, so I wouldn't at all be a little bit surprised if the music is completely originally composed. Um, all that. All right. Whew. Two of you are not familiar. I'll have to get some. <laughs> I believe in you. Go, go was, right ahead. Just that say stuff. The, Nobody will know if you're honest. That was the uh, third admiral from One Piece. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh so God. this boss, um, I am, I practiced it over and over, and I'm just not good at it. Oh, That's a spirit. I do, I'm going to do my best. You got to believe in yourself more. It's hard. No. This is Albino Slenderman. The <laughs> 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 This, uh, we actually do, I know that, um, Viz mentioned you can only fight, um, the White Defender or Dung Defender in, in game as one of the five great knights, but, um, we do see all the others in game at some point outside of, um, outside of Hedgemore who we kind of see their armor, as we mentioned. And that's time. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Well done, GG. Uh, like I said, there's other things to discover in this um, in this mod, like a short little, very unique platforming section, as well as sitting on this bench, but I'll let you guys uh, discover that for yourselves. Um, but yeah, it's very cool. Huge shout out to the team that, that made this. I thought it was so awesome whenever I first played it. And uh, yeah, um, I guess that's it for Hollow Knight. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for commentating slow right now. Yeah. Of course. Anytime, buddy. Anytime. Uh, you can um, find me at Twitch TV slash Visuals TV, uh, Visuals with a Y, and Twitter, Visuals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, join the Discord. Join the Hollow Knight Discord. Join the Pale Core Discord. They deserve it. It's yeah. really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I do. I stream three, four, or five times a week, doing true ending runs, trying to get world record back. You know, usual. The usual indeed. Well, thank you so much to Viz and Slow It Down and Rhino Feeder. That was a great run. We had a lot of fun, and that was a great incentive. So thank you for all of that. Thank you to everyone that donated for that. We're going to take a quick pause for the cause. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to keep the lights on when we get back <laughs> to the beginning. Set up for our next run, Super Mario 64 70 Star by Ama Humahaba. Don't go touching that dial. We'll be right back.